Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. I've said many times lately on this show about education or certain elements of education, teaching kids with skills that won't be relevant when they leave. I mean, how valuable will Excel and death by PowerPoint be 10 years from now? But students are also faced with the challenge that they're preparing for job roles that don't even exist yet. But we do know that automation and artificial intelligence and and similar technologies, when they enter the workplace, workers are going to need to hone their soft skills. Because any mundane task can be automated, but being human, learning how to speak with people, present your ideas and connect with people, being creative, managing others and building strategies, these are all tasks that tech cannot do and will never be able to do. So when I read that the Beaver Country Day School is installing podcast studios and have seen for themselves how students use this medium to better hone their communication and presentation skills, as well as achieve a deeper understanding of subject matter, I had to get them on the show today to find out more. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to the Beaver Country Day School in Boston, Massachusetts, so we can find out more about their forward-thinking approach to digital skills and how it is helping enhance education. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Um, hi, my name is Margot Amuel, and I'm going to be a 11th grader in the fall. Um, something that I do is create podcasts. I've always loved journalism, so this is just a new form of being able to communicate and share news. So that's something that I do. And my name is Rob McDonald. I'm a teacher at Beaver Community School. Uh, I've been teaching for about 20 years, and for the last year of that time, uh, I've been serving as creative technologist, part of our new R&D team at Beaver, and um, that includes uh, having the opportunity to teach a podcasting class last year. Well, a huge thanks for taking the time to come on today. I love what you're doing, and that's one of the reasons I got you on the show today. And I just wish there was a creative technologist teacher when I was at school. Yeah, none of that existed. But but can you just set the scene and tell me how the story behind Beaver and creating a podcast studio is used to help students hone their communication and presentation skills, as well as achieve a deeper understanding of the subject matter? Because I think it's fantastic. Well, we definitely saw students uh, making podcasts in lots of different classes uh, over the past several years, um, just as another way of sharing their their work, sharing their ideas with uh, with one another. This year, we opened up a brand new R&D center, uh, and it has two dedicated recording studios that have been used uh, pretty extensively by students making their own podcasts. In a podcast, you want to deliver information in an engaging way, uh, in an efficient way. It helps students think about you know, how do you, how do you tell the story behind some sort of uh, historical incident? So I think mostly what we're seeing is that it's increasing engagement. It gives students more ownership over the process instead of just passively listening and taking notes. It's a more collaborative process, um, and it lets students create content instead of just consuming it. I'm um, just adding on to what Mr. McDonald said, if you flip to the other hand, and as a student at Beaver, um, I've definitely gotten a sense that communication skills is something that really meant a lot and was a mission of Beaver. Um, so another example is, for example, when um, conducting presentations, we're only allowed to have five words on a slide. Um, so things like that, in addition to podcasts, um, really pushes students to be able to think about the way in which they're articulating their ideas, because I think that's really um, a very important skill in life. And I think podcast is just another way in order to accomplish that and make sure what you're saying really projects what you mean to say. And something else that really caught my attention was how audio has a significant impact on our ability to connect and learn from content and also how the retention rate of auditory learning and how that compares to reading and lecturing. Can you tell me more about that and those comparisons? Uh, there's definitely been some research out there that, um, that's showing that uh, auditory learning sticks about twice as well as, as reading on its own. And if I remember correctly, it's about four times stronger than, um, 
you know, what, what you get from traditional lecture-based learning, we definitely see that, you know, students are absorbing information um, that's created and presented in podcasts uh, very well. It's just a very engaging format, so it's working well for us. Um, definitely not replacing reading, but, but a nice uh, addition uh, that we can, we can fold in on top of more traditional learning. And in addition, I think what's really unique about podcasts is that you're able to hear the voices. So I think that when um, you're hearing a story from a podcast, or even if you're saying, uh, even if you're telling it yourself through a podcast, you're able to hear what makes the um, podcast host sound surprised, scared, excited. Is there a voice high or low? And I think these details can really add another dimension to the story that isn't necessarily gained through reading or writing. And especially um, in our generation as a millennial, the way in which we're absorbing our news is really changing. Now we're watching videos, um, GIFs, uh, social media videos, Snapchat stories, whatever it might be, the ways in which we're getting our news are, are changing and we want it fast, we want it quick. So I think podcast might be um, an appealing way in order to get your news because you're able to hear these voices and hear directly from the people that are experiencing um, these experiences. And I think it really just adds another level of empathy and connection to individuals who are um, experiencing whatever story that story they're sharing through through this platform of a podcast. And I also think it's a fantastic opportunity here that we've got both the teacher and the pupil on the show. So I'm curious, I mean, how has audio, or how would you both say that audio has impacted students' learning, both from a teaching and a student's point of view? In my own experience, I think that being able to create podcasts or being able to have access to this audio format um, has really granted me the opportunity to speak to a lot of really interesting people. So I know the main podcast that I'm working on today, it's called Back to Beaver, uh, Back to BVR. And uh, the goal was to create a podcast researching our school's archives, which is a collection of yearbooks, newspaper articles, artwork that really document Beaver's history. And it goes all the way back to 1920. So I think my goal in this was to really be able to hear those individual stories those moments walking to the field hockey field, those moments in the cafeteria in a class, because I think that you can get the overall quick summary of what Beaver is online. However, I think what really builds an accurate picture is those collection of stories and those individual moments. So to my previous point, I think that audio has impacted uh, my learning because I've been able to listen to stories from alumni who have been able to share their own really interesting experiences here at Beaver, um, difficulties, hurdles they faced, how they overcame that. And I think being able to hear from others, hear advice they had for um, themselves when they were my age has really impacted my learning. So I think for me, the audio aspect is more about the people that I've had the opportunity to speak to. Um, and less about the audio itself. At, at, at Beaver, uh, everything that we do as teachers press the, gives students opportunities to really be active learners. So podcasting fits in nicely because uh, students are doing their own research and presenting the results to one another. Um, so there's, there's more of a collective approach to education uh, instead of each student just individually listening and taking notes and then taking the quiz at the end of the unit. Um, students do collaborate and share ideas with one another. It's clear that their their own opinions uh, are part of the process. Um, that they they have a chance to grapple with big ideas, uh, listen to a range of different perspectives on an issue. And adding on to what Mr. McDonald said, I think that um, audio or creating podcasts is also really beneficial because a lot of it is trial and error. So I know recently I recorded a podcast. And the audio didn't very, sound that professional. So Mr. McDonald really helped me a lot with that and learn how to better use the equipment. So I think really that process of being able to fail the first time, but then being able to try again, revise, edit, and learn, I think is really imperative to the growth process, especially as a student and um, being able to maybe not get it the first time, but being able to try again, I think is, ha has been really beneficial for me and has been applicable in my other classes, whether I'm struggling with an English project or whatever it is, being able to know that if I just keep trying, eventually I'll be able to get there just like I have with podcast audio.
Absolutely. And also, just to help people listening visualise uh, exactly what it is that you're doing there, I mean, can you explain how students are using that recording studio that you've created there, the idea behind it? Or what do you think the most important lesson students are learning from creating podcasts, would you say? In terms of the most important lessons students are learning, I guess I would say that, that because they are trying to tell stories and present information in a format that's used by professionals, it gives our students a chance to uh, to communicate in the ways that the world communicates. You don't see a lot of adults uh, writing essays, you know, three paragraph essays in a traditional way. We do see lots of people using podcasts as a way of you know conveying information. So I think the fact that our students are getting practice with with something that's uh, a growing element of of real world communication um, that that's uh, you know, a branch of journalism that's evolving right now. Um, the fact that it's that it's a format that is relatively young and and growing. It's exciting for our students to be part of that. And I guess I would also add that um, the the research element uh, involved in the podcast that I've seen so far has been pretty significant. And and students seem to be more motivated to dig in and um, do some really deep research in service of the podcast that they're creating, probably more than than what I've seen around those traditional three-paragraph essays. Yeah, we definitely have to agree with everything Mr. McDonald just said. Um, but in terms of the visualization piece, I think that the podcast studios themselves are um, – little studios you can walk into with a, with microphones and the walls are padded in order to add the audio. And I remember personally the first time when I went down to the podcast studios to create a podcast actually for my history class. I remember feeling so cool and professional with the microphone and the headphones. And I was thinking, oh, this must be what it's like on radio or on NPR or whenever they're, when they're recording an album for a movie so I, I just remember uh, feeling really professional and really feeling like, pretend this must be what it's like to be a real podcast host or a real journalist. So I remember that piece. It was really cool. And I, every time I go down there and I put on the headphones and with the microphone, I still think this is so cool that I have the opportunity to be able to um, have access to this equipment um, because I think that's really unique. It really is, and you really are a podcast host now with your own podcast, so kudos to you. But I, I, obviously you're both very passionate about creating podcasts and the benefits that that brings, but I'm curious, do what podcast do you listen to regularly? Uh, I, I did a survey on the very first day of the podcast class this past winter and got a pretty long list. Some of the some of the podcasts that definitely got solid reviews from the class as a whole were um, Visibilia, Reply All, Serial, uh, Welcome to Night Vale on the on the fictional end of the Song Exploder, Revisions History, and definitely This American Life, all were examples of podcasts that um, that the students were drawn to and felt like they learned from. Yeah, personally, I would say those are all great podcasts, and I, I mean, I love listening to podcasts, especially it's so convenient whether you're commuting, on a long car ride, trying to relax after some homework. But personally, my all-time favorite podcast would be Hidden Brain, um, which is a neuroscience, neuropsychology, uh, psychology podcast. Um, I just think it's really interesting to be able to hear about behavior and what makes people act a certain way. So personally, that's my favorite podcast. But um, I think Mr. McDonald brought up some other amazing ones, such as This American Life. Yeah, I think there are just so many great podcasts out there. And Especially, I'm always amazed by the topics by which they cover. So you always find a history podcast, a science pod- podcast, English podcast, art podcast. Whatever it is that you're interested in, there will be a podcast that is out there for you. And I think that is why podcasts, one reason why podcasts have been so popular is because everyone can find something that they want to listen to. Um, and whatever mood they're in, there's a podcast for them. So I think that that's um, a really unique piece to the podcast as well. Now, speaking of podcasts, obviously you've got your own there, so I've got to ask, what is the Back to BVR podcast all about, and what inspired you, Margo, to create it? Yeah, well, thank you so much for asking um, this question. So the Back to BVR podcast, as I mentioned uh, briefly before, is a podcast 
that explores the archives of Beaver. So in the basement of the Beaver Country Day School, we have a collection of yearbooks, photographs, artwork, etc. that document um, Beaver's long history all the way back from 1920. So when I first found out that we had access to this information, I thought, wow, this is so cool and not a lot of students know about this. So I was thinking, what about if there was a way that we could bring this information to light and allow students to be able to hear about it and being be able to hear the stories of people who went to Beaver in its past. And at the time, I was particularly fascinated by the shift to co-education. So at one time, Beaver was an all-girls school. And when they went, when they made the shift to co-education at the time, people considered an all-girls school turning to a co-ed school was not at, was not the same caliber as a um, all-male school switching to co-ed school. So I was particularly fascinated by that per- period in time and how did be uh, how did Beaver overcome that um, that drop in enrollment and grow to be the school it is today. So initially, that's what sparked my interest in creating this podcast. Um, but, and excuse me, and yeah, that, that's initially what sparked my curiosity in um, the archives is being able to hear those stories and that shift from co-education. But I think why I chose a podcast for that platform was because I always loved listening to podcasts, but also because I had just completed a podcast in history class. And I loved creating that podcast so much that I really wanted to create another podcast and another podcast and another podcast. So I decided this would be creating a podcast about these archives would be an amazing way to combine both newfound interests and passions. And I think um, since then, I can give you some examples of episodes that um, have been created on the Back to VR podcast. So the first episode was with the head of school, uh, Peter Hutton, and it was speaking about the mission of Beaver, um, what he, the changes he's witnessed Beaver make through his time here at Beaver. Um, in addition, we spoke about the goal of Beaver, the future. And then the second episode um, was an interview with Susan Line, who's a really impressive, notable alumni who went on to found uh, BBG Ventures, which is a venture capital fund dedicated to supporting um, and investing in companies with at least one female founder. And then the third episode is um, again, an interview with an alumni, Lauren Lappick, who's a phenomenal artist, who created this really impressive John Lennon statue, which is on the walls of Beaver. So really speaking to her about the arts at Beaver, what she's learned, how she's grown as an artist in her process. But I think in the future episodes, my goal is really going to be to paint more of a picture here at Beaver. So potentially looking at the cafeteria menus, seeing how those have changed over time, how the food has evolved. In addition, looking at sports, uh, what sports had we had before that we don't have now? What about some impressive athletes that walk through the halls of Beaver? And potentially even looking at Beaver during the war times. What happened to Beaver during World War II? What were the political opinions of the students at the time, looking through the newspapers? So really being able to not only speak to alumni, teachers, and faculty and students, but also being able to pair that with information from the archives, whether it be quotes or photographs, although those can't be represented in the podcast, um, potentially sharing them online or describing the way they look. Um, So that was really this podcast itself, and I think that being able to share this information with my community is another aspect that really interested me as well is that piece is being able to share these stories because with a podcast, you're able to record that moment. Whereas in class, whereas in a class discussion or even talking to a peer or a parent or, or a friend, you have, it's just a finite moment, but within a podcast, you're able to record that conversation, record those stories and then repeat it and listen again and again and again and share it with others. So that was really my goal, not having this be a panel, but having this be something that people 20 years from now can listen to and think, wow, it's so interesting. That's Bieber's history. And even sharing what Bieber is like now for future listeners um, as well.
That I was going to also ask, if there was a recording studio or a podcast recording studio in my school back in the day, I would imagine that both teachers and pupils will be fighting to get access to it. So I've got to ask, what other projects have come out of that recording studio? And do people use it outside of school hours as well for personal projects outside of school? Yeah, we've, we've seen the recording studio used for a pretty wide range of projects. I also think of a, a couple of students who work together on a fictional podcast about time travel and uh, put a lot of work into writing the scripts and finding various uh, people around the school to, to play roles in the story, doing a lot of fairly professional editing. There's a, a good range of, uh, of uses and, and rooms that are uh, being used on a regular basis, definitely. Yeah, and adding on to what Mr. McDonald said as well, I think it's always so cool going down to the podcast studios and seeing what students are working on. I think it's so cool that students are producing their own music down in those recording studios as well. Um, and listening to the songs, they sound so professional and so cool. And I think that's so awesome that um, in our generation, you don't necessarily need a record company to be able to produce a um, high production song and be, be able to share that. So that's something that students are creating there as well. Um, but speaking to one part of the question, which is do students stay after hours? Definitely. I think that those uh, recording studios are open for whatever time you want to use them. I know there are many times I personally have stayed after school to continue to work, and I can definitely see that with other students as well. But I think going down there and being able to ask, hey, what are you working on? What are you doing? And being able to hear um, what they're creating, tips they might have, I think it really builds a community, um, especially the tip sharing aspect of it. Um, how did you edit that? How can I improve this? So I think everyone's really friendly and they're really open to share what they've learned. And I think that has been really cool um, to be able to connect with the community of other people who are interested in podcasts and audio creation as well. So are there any podcast-specific classes at Beaver, and how do you approach teaching the subject? Uh, do you cover things like, I don't know, editing in Audacity and subjects like that? Where do, where do you begin? Is, do you have a whole framework around that? I decided that we would start by just getting a sense of what people had already listened to, what sort of exposure they had to the podcasting world, and then trying to give them a chance to listen to a nice range of podcasts that they had not heard before. So that was um, that was the approach during the first couple of classes. But then pretty quickly, we had our first assignment where students created their own, either a follow-up episode based on uh, a professional podcast that they had heard or uh, creating an episode that, that had been inspired by a topic they had heard covered in a, in a professional podcast. And, and after that, that assignment of, of creating a follow-up episode um, from there, and students uh, were ready to dive in and, and just come up with their own original ideas of those professional podcasts, and we can borrow and learn from. And then also, uh, the other half of the class consists of students creating their own podcasts, sharing them, giving each other critical feedback, and, and making revisions to those uh, to those original podcasts. So I think that that balance worked well. I think our students are very comfortable collaborating with each other. They're very comfortable with the idea of giving feedback on a regular basis and revising their work. That's part of the culture of the school, and that worked out nicely because um, you know that that lines up well with the process that's used for for creating podcasts. Well, a huge thank you for coming on today and speaking with me. But before I do let you go, can you remind the listeners of where they can find you guys online, where they can find uh, that podcast, Back to BVR, and also contact uh, yourself there if they've got any questions. Our next step and goal um, with these podcasts is to potentially actually create a website where we're able to share all the podcasts or music students are working on here at Beaver. So we'll let you know when that, excuse me, when that website is up and running, but as of now, uh, you can find the Back to BVR podcast on SoundCloud. And if you have any questions or inquiries, feel free to reach out to me at margo at amuol.com. The last name I know is a little bit tricky to spell, but it's A-M-O-U-Y-A-L. And in addition, I would just like to thank you for hearing about our own podcast stories and as a, especially as a podcaster myself, I think it's really interesting to hear how a professional podcast host um, and journalist conducts interviews and conducts 
their own discussions with people um, to be able to apply to future discussions I have with others. Uh, I, I am in the habit of talking to teachers at, uh, at schools all over the place, and if anyone would like to get in touch with me, uh, my email is probably the best option, and it's rmacdonald at bcdschool.org. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to anybody out there about uh, podcasting and, and how it can enhance education. Well, thanks so much for the kind words there. I absolutely love what you're doing here because it's not about replacing traditional educational methods. It's about using podcasts as a tool to enhance learning and especially uh, finding new ways to connect in a digital world, which is so important now. I think it's so forward thinking what you're doing. So a big thank you to both of you for taking the time out of your day to come and speak with me today. Thanks so much for having us on. Thank you as well. I think audio has a major impact on our ability to connect and learn from each other and from content. In fact, the retention rate of auditory learning is two times higher than reading and four times higher than lecturing. And that's a big takeaway for me today from this episode. And with reliance on audio, podcasts are also offering a more of an intimate form of media than visual sources do, which has resulted in almost a quarter of the US population tuning in regularly to their favourite podcasts. The fact that Beaver recognises that podcasts can mould education and entertainment to create a greater level of engagement and, of course, interest from students is incredibly forward-thinking. I think it's going to be so interesting to see how the next generation of creators will continue to embrace audio-focused media for information and entertainment and what kind of content they're going to create. And of course, the only disappointing fact there was that uh, both the teacher and the students are listening to so many great podcasts, but not the tech blog writer podcast. But hey, you can't have it all. But as Casey Kasem used to say, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for those stars. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.